What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're going to jump in and talk about the loot table for the Deep Stone Crypt raid in Beyond Light. So, if you want a breakdown of what's worth knowing, if you're trying to unlock all of the Deep Stone Crypt rewards, we'll do our best to round it up in this video. Of course, this raid does have its own vendor in the form of a cache that lets us purchase raid gear. It's a pretty neat mechanic, and we'll speak about the currency needed for it, where to get all of the various weapon and armor drops in each of the encounters, as well as hidden triumphs, exotic drops, and badge rewards. Because again, this is a highly farmable raid in a number of ways. So, as always, I hope this video will be useful, and if it is, feel free to drop us a like rating down below. But now, let's get into it. And so speaking immediately about exotic rewards for the raid. Of course, it's now known that the Eyes of Tomorrow exotic rocket launcher is both a bit of a beast, but also is a random drop from the final encounter inside of this raid. So kind of like what we saw with Anarchy or Taraba, as well as various D1 exotics, this is going to be a low chance drop from the very final boss chest. And based on how many have dropped so far, it's probably safe to assume that this is a kind of 5% drop chance, which is the same as what we had previously for weapons like Anarchy. You simply gotta get those three raid clears in every week if you can, and the rest is down to RNG. However, slightly less RNG would be the Ghost Shell for the raid, so this is an exotic shell, and it's simply acquired by collecting five data pads inside of the Deep Stone Crypt, so those are located pretty much between the section immediately before the first encounter, and the end of the spacewalk area. I will link a video down below that has the locations for each of those data pads if you need them. Once you've got them, you can unlock the rock bottom triumph, which gives you the ghost shell. If you're looking to acquire the exotic sparrow from the raid, it does require the completion of the not a scratch triumph. And for this one, you need to bring all pikes from the starting heat bubble to the final heat bubble in the opening encounter for the raid. Not something I've done just yet, but if you look up guides for this, essentially the easy strategy is to have a couple of players clear all of the heat bubble zones. And as long as you don't despawn the pikes at the start, you can head back through and safely take the pikes through to the final heat bubble. So that's going to be the Sparrow. And finally, there's the Crypt Keeper Triumph to loot hidden chests in the Deep Stone Crypt. And you only really have to loot a couple, and this will reward the new shader for the raid. Now though, let's get on to some of the other substantial loot drops for the raid. And one of the huge replayability elements for Deep Stone Crypt is the new end of raid vendor, which is literally the final raid chest, but you can interact with it once you've cleared the raid. So the cache of the crypt allows you to spend a new raid currency called Spoils of Conquest to purchase packages with chances at loot that you don't have, or you can direct purchase rerolls of raid weapons and armor that you've already acquired. And so it's a slightly unprecedented system for a raid, and a pretty refreshing one as well. We'll cover the unique weapons in a moment, but as we can see, direct reroll purchases cost 20 spoils, and you have to have already had these items dropped previously in the raid. Or you can buy crypt caches, and these cost 60 spoils, and the crypt caches come in four varieties. So we can see security spoils, and when you purchase this, you potentially get the arms, legs, or class item, or the scout rifle. Replication spoils, can drop the arms, legs, or class item once again, but then has a chance at the sniper rifle or shotgun to drop. Disarmament spoils will drop the chest, arms, or class item, or the hand cannon from the raid. And then finally, we've got abomination spoils, dropping head, chest, and legs, or either the sword or the machine gun for the raid. And that loot table is essentially identical as far as we know to the individual loot tables that we see throughout each of the encounters. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But in terms of getting Spoils of Conquest, that new currency, they come firstly from secret raid chests, or the two non-encounter chests inside of the raid, and these offer raid mods, repeat drops, or according to some players, very rare drops of things that you don't already have. But probably more important in the end are the Spoils of Conquest. So we get 10 Spoils of Conquest from each secret chest per week on the first run, and then you can farm for an additional 5 Spoils per encounter on repeat runs of the raid. And this means you can constantly farm 20 Spoils per raid run, but of course you can farm Spoils by running the raid as much as you like across multiple characters as well. And these can be spent on anything from the cache of the Crypt, but also they need to be spent if you want to acquire the Anarchy or Taraba from the Memorial Kiosk in the Tower. And so in terms of past and present raid content, this currency is now pretty important, and the cache vendor system in itself is pretty cool. We should mention though, in case you wonder, yes, you do need to clear the raid in order to get access to the cache of the Crypt. Now if you want locations for the non-encounter chests, the first one is found in the Sparrow Encounter at the start of the raid. So at the very final heat bubble, if you look back towards where we came from and then head left, you can jump up to the first chest on top of these rocks right here. But the second one is during the spacewalk on the first set of stepping stone style jumps. So you'll see on the lower section, it's just sitting on a platform right here. So those are both of the currently known chest locations in the raid. And now talking a little bit about the encounter loot tables, 
Of course, to re-roll at the vendor or get repeat drops, we otherwise need to acquire the unique drops from encounters. And then of course there is the chance to acquire specific drops from the certain caches that the crypt vendor has. But in terms of weapons and armor, the drops follow pretty much what the cache of the crypt vendor tells us. So Testify did make a Reddit post that collected a lot of information about loot drops for the raid. Full credit to them for this. But if we look at their actual loot table, it makes sense that the drops correlate to what we can pick up from the crypt caches for each of the encounters. So in the security encounter, arms, legs, and class items will drop for all classes, as well as chances at the scout rifle. The second encounter inside of replication can drop the sniper rifle or the shotgun, as well as arms, legs, or class items once again. For disarmament, the hand cannon is listed as the featured weapon from the cache, but players have also reported getting the shotgun dropped. And then you can get the chest, arms, or class item from the armor set, with the final boss having two unique weapons, so you've got the sword and the machine gun. Once again, players have reported having those weapons drop in other places, but this is the encounter they're strictly associated with. But also the helmet drops exclusively from that final encounter, with extra chances at the chest and leg armor. And so in terms of best chances at certain drops in particular encounters, that pretty much rounds it up. Now though, if we take a look at some of the weapons for the raid, initially we have the Commemoration Machine Gun. So this is a new adaptive frame machine gun. You can roll perks like Zen Moment, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Surplus and Feeding Frenzy. But also, you get weapon perks unique to Deep Stone Crypt weapons. So we've got Reconstruction, and the weapon slowly reloads itself over time, up to double the capacity. And then you've got Unrelenting, Rampage, Dragonfly, and a few other decent bonuses. But looking to the Reconstruction perk on the Posterity Hand Cannon right here, you can see I've got over 30 rounds in the magazine in this particular clip. And so massive magazine sizes on any of the weapons that can get that bonus. But Posterity itself, the Raid Hand Cannon, is Precision Frame. And you can roll Rapid Hit, Feeding Frenzy, Fourth Times the Charm, Surplus, Reconstruction once again, or Killing Wind. And then you have Demolitionist, Unrelenting, Rampage, Opening Shot, One for All, or Redirection, which is another Raid exclusive perk here. Damaging rank and file combatants increases damage against more powerful ones. And this does give a pretty significant boost as well. And the third unique perk for raid weapons from the crypt at least would be recombination. First weapon we have that this can roll on is the Succession Sniper, a new aggressive frame sniper rifle. And recombination allows elemental final blows to increase the damage of the weapon's next shot. So that's a pretty interesting one. But in the first slot, it can get moving target, killing wind, no distractions, slideways, Lead from Gold, or Reconstruction. And then you've got Recombination in the second slot, or you've got bonuses like Thresh, Vorpal Weapon, Snapshot, and even Rampage. And then for the trusty Scout Rifle, a new Energy Scout Rifle that's Rapid Fire Frame. So that's an archetype we don't have a ton of. And you can get Killing Wind, Under Pressure, Zen Moment, Reconstruction, Surplus, or Outlaw in the first slot, with Sympathetic Arsenal, Redirection, Opening Shot, High Impact Reserves, Wellspring, or Eye of the Storm in the second slot. There is also the Heritage Shotgun, the Precision Frame, that you can get dropped in the Kinetic slot. Got the all-important Accurized Rounds and things like that. But you can get Hipfire Grip, Reconstruction, Autoloading Holster or Jewel Loader, Slide Shot or Outlaw. And then you've got Killing Wind, Thresh, Unrelenting, Recombination, Snapshot or Moving Target. So these weapons do have a whole bunch of new bonuses on them, really. But there's also the Bequest, the new Legendary Sword from the Raid. Not something most players are super excited about, especially with Lament dropping very shortly after. But you can get Relentless Strikes, Thresh, Tireless Blade, or Energy Transfer, Flash Counter, On Guard, Surrounded, or Assassin's Blade. So for the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to be one of the best swords in the game, but otherwise there are some pretty interesting weapons dropping from Deep Stone Crypt. And there are the exclusive mods for the raid that drop from those chests. So you've got things like Herd Thinner, where your weapons deal additional damage to non-powerful combatants. Of course, these mods only work inside of the raid, but there's enhanced suppressor augment with evasive maneuvers. And with the augment, you take decreased damage from powerful foes, but with no augment, grenades temporarily stun your targets. You've got paint the target from enhanced scanner augment, and while you have scanner, powerful targets are marked by precision shots and take increased damage for a short period. But without it, you gain a bonus to resilience and recovery, and your class ability recharges faster. And then you've got operator augment, with rapid regen, and while you're operator, you gain periodic bursts of healing when your health is depleted, but without it, collecting orbs of power causes you to periodically spawn heavy ammo. And so those are some pretty interesting and unique bonuses exclusively active inside of the raid. But otherwise, guys, that pretty much sums up everything that's worth knowing about loot from the Deep Stone Crypt. Personally, I do need to spend some more time with the weapons, pick up more rolls and things like that. But early impressions are that there's some pretty cool stuff, and also, 
I've got to say personally that I'm much more impressed with the cosmetic element of the raid gear this time around. I'd be curious to hear your guys, and I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about it as well. But I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you up to date with Destiny content. Let us know your experiences inside of Deepstone Crypt down below. But otherwise, guys, thanks as always for tuning in, and I hope you have an awesome day.